Then what is a malicious software? Malicious software is basically a code, a software code that has been created to cause havoc. Okay, and that code could be malicious. Malicious means uh, that is unwanted. That is uh, that is not good for your network or not good for your computer system. That's not good for your data. Okay, so malicious software, also known as a malware. So the word malware is malicious software. So you're just getting rid of that software. So it's malware. What does it constitute? Arguably, it constitutes one of the most significant categories of threats for a computer system. There are many malicious softwares. We're going to see in a couple of slides what that malicious software could be. It could be, you know, something to do with uh, attacking the kit, attacking, um, uh, throwing out adways, uh, hijacking your uh, web browser, monitoring your keystrokes, you know, anything. So it's a software that gets into your system. How does it come into your system? It comes into your system by, you know, uh, by packets, IP packets, or a software that you have downloaded from the internet, illegal software that you downloaded and installed it on your system. And if you don't have an antivirus software, it will not be able to detect it. If you don't have any spyware, malware software that uh, you have installed to detect it, it will not detect. So it will be uh, hijacking your system, modifying your computers, modifying, uh, correcting a lot of data like your keystrokes, your passwords, your uh, personal information that could be you know relevant with credit card all that information is going to go so malware is a program that is inserted into your system and which system is this your computer system that is running an operating system an operating system has got programs and those programs are accessing data so all that information can be compromised so usually done in a very covertly fashion which means it is done in a very secretive fashion very hidden fashion you don't even know that you have a virus only then uh, when your system starts to crash, when your system starts to become slow, when a system doesn't respond and when your, uh, when your bank details are compromised and you start to see people uh, taking and uh, withdrawing money from your bank system or using misusing your credit card, then you'll realize that something went wrong in your system and it was hijacked. So the intent of this is to compromise the confidentiality of your data that is there on your computer. So you're typing your customer reference number, your password, all the data can be. Uh, can be captured by the by the malware that was installed by a hacker because the hacker has got control over malware and malware has got control over a computer and the computer is being used by you so you're typing in information and that information is being captured by the malware and the malware information is secretly given to the hacker who's sitting somewhere uh, in the internet somewhere in the internet he could be in romania he could be in china he could be in india he could be anywhere where he's capturing that data and you become a victim of your data and you become the victim of the application that you're running and you become a victim of an operating system that you're using. And otherwise it is really annoying and it could be, you know, uh, disrupting the victim in a very uh, bad way. So malicious software are generally host dependent, which means it depends on, uh, they are like parasitic uh, type of software, which means they depend on the host uh, operating system. There are also some software that are not host dependent, which means they are self-contained uh, programs. That means they can operate on their own, they can survive on their own and then uh, do whatever activity they can do. Some of them depend on your host operating system to execute certain programs and certain operating uh, files and executable files for it to be activated. So there are two types of malicious software broadly classifying uh, host dependent and the other one is self-contained uh, programs. Generally, the self-contained program can further be uh, explained as replicating programs. When executed, they produce one or more copies of itself so that they can be activated at a later time and then they can be spread at a later time. So it's called self-replicating program. Others are not replicating. Say they do not make copies, but they do harm for your computer and for your system and your network. So most of the time, non-replicating programs are installed on servers and replicating programs uh, like uh, malicious software, like, uh, um, like uh, uh, which are self-contained are installed on your computer systems. Now, uh, that was a broad classification, but if you have a look at it, there are quite a lot of terminologies that are come, but they, have the, but they are all malicious software. So these are all softwares that the users did not authorize to be installed or did not authorize to be used. Like for example, I have got my laptop and I'm trying to use this laptop to install certain programs. I wouldn't have downloaded a so software to do some harm to my computer network or to my data. So obviously malicious software is a software that the user like me did not authorize to install it, but it got loaded, it got installed. 
and that software will start to collect your data. It will start to uh, you know, use without my permission, without my operating system permission. And it does quite a lot of things. It could be like a trap door. It could be like a logic bomb. It could be like a Trojan horse. Or it could be like a virus or a worm. Okay, so these are some some issues that we are going to get. For example, uh, there's a quite a lot of terminologies with uh, software, malicious software. We'll just try to go through briefly of them. Advanced persistence uh, threat. It is where the cyber crime uh, directed at businesses and political targets. So it's more toward large organizations and so on. What do they do? They do an advanced persistent threat to the system. So how do they do that? They, they target and specifically identify systems and networks for intrusion detection you know, to intrude into their uh, networks using their intrusion uh, technology and then they insert malware into it and they are doing it persistently constantly always applying that uh, uh, so generally it could be like a state sponsored organization this is a, generally at a high level so it could be between uh, say uh, two superpowers you know trying to compromise their networks their systems and so on then you have adware adware that you see quite a lot even adware uh, can come like a cookie that can be installed through your browser so let's say you go to some illegal websites and uh, you haven't cleared your cache, your temporary files, then you can you can start to see a lot of pop-ups, you know, pop-up advertisements. Sometimes if you have visited some illegal sites, those illegal sites are advertising their illegal uh, items or illegal uh, adwares. So that's what happens as adware. So adware can easily come and they can also, if you click on those adwares, furthermore, you could be actually inviting trouble to your network. Then there are attack kits. So these are some tools, a set of tools that are generating new malwares automatically using a variety of supply propagation and payload mechanisms. So payload mechanism will all come through uh, IP packets and you're inviting as you keep on, as it keeps on generating the new malware, automatically it is connecting to the backend websites, illegal websites and downloading more and more malicious software, more and more variant software. Then there's also auto uh, router. Auto router is a hacking tool that is used for new machines uh, to be accessed remotely. So for example, there is uh, some other computer that I want to access, but I don't have admin user rights. But if I use uh, malicious hacker tools, then I can actually access, break into that computer. This is generally done through either SSH or remote login or remote shell type of, uh, type of connectivity. Then you have got a backdoor or a trapdoor, which means uh, it's a mechanism where you bypass a normal security checks and you get into the program directly, like authentication. So if you want to, if you've got a system that you need to authenticate, like a like a website or a database, you you bypass that authentication and you get into the computer network. So that is basically the bypassing of a normal security check. And a normal security check could be user ID and password. So if you want to bypass and get into it, then there are also other types like downloaders. Okay, uh, like you have got download boosters, downloaders, and so on. They could be some backdoor softwares that could be of a malicious intent. So drive by downloads where you know your website could be uh, can be compromised. They can exploit the browser's weaknesses and then they can exploit your system. Exploits that could be weaknesses in your operating system, weaknesses or vulnerabilities in your operating system, or it could be a program. You installed a program that has not been updated, that has not been uh, applied with security patches. Then you got a flutter, denial of service. Uh, key loggers are very popular nowadays. I mean, key logging softwares are heavily used as a malicious code that gets into your network. And then when you type in your customer reference number and password, it uh, whatever you type into the keyboard, they capture that information and pass it on. Then logic bomb is when you have got certain, uh, say uh, it's a programming code that was secretly inserted, okay? And what it does is it checks for certain uh, certain action by the computer. It could be, uh, say a day or a date or a time. For example, like we had 1st of April. So 1st of April could be a time that could be used to trigger a particular action. So it's a code when you when your system date is 1st of April or 31st of July or 31st of December or 25th of December, it can trigger. So it could be a logic bomb based on certain logical combinations or logical tasks have been taken into consideration. Then you have macro viruses. Macro viruses they come as as a template or as a um, you know as a macro code that is uh, that is embedded in your documents. It could be like a like a word document. It could be like a spreadsheet. So when you en enable macros, 
the macro will contain some code and that code is going to cause damage to your network. So that could be the macro virus. Then you've got mobile code that is a, it's a script or a code that could be self uh, replicating and performing on multiple platforms. So it's a mobile because it moves from one computer to another computer. It could also go into your smartphones. So smartphone means not that I'm saying it's a mobile phone, but I'm saying it's a code that can go into different devices in a, in a very mobile way, which mobility is there. It can transfer, it can move from one computer to another computer. That's why it is mobile. It is moving from one system to another system. Then uh, you have a spammer programs that could be used for very large volumes for unwanted emails, like spam emails that are coming in hundreds of times. So quite a lot of, uh, domains like yahoo and gmail and so on domain key identified mail systems uh, they have a spammer control so they have got a standard detection of spams and they can put it in a spam folder spyware software that collects uh, information it's again a piece of code it collects personal information that is being transmitted from your computer to another computer so it could be keystroke data just like keylogger this is a, a spyware software so keystroker and so on so there is a spyware uh, anti-spyware softwares that are available quite a lot of them are available if installed it can detect these type of activities then trojan horse is a very popular uh, type of uh, attack that can happen quite a lot of time trojan horse is a program um, in which it is it, it, it contains some malicious code but that that program itself looks harmful uh, uh, harmless like for example word.exe or excel.exe or notepad.exe so it's all a standard program that has been replaced. So you, you think it is a word program, so you double click on the word, but the word has been compromised, the executable has been compromised, and Trojan Horse is a, a backdoor that has been embedded inside that particular code, and that code gets invoked. So apparently it looks harmless programming code, but Trojan Horse widely is uh, distributed as a, as a part of the code, but it contains a computer virus. Virus is a malware that executes, uh, you know, tries to replicate itself and other executable machines and script codes. Now, this is the most common type of infection that you see in a computer. In fact, we have a virus that is, uh, that is going on that infects humans. That's why we want to keep a distance. We want to be, uh, have it disconnected. So that's the same concept is there in, in uh, software viruses as well. So it tries to execute, it tries to spread from one, per, one computer to another computer, from one network to another network. Worm is again carrying a payload such as virus or some malicious soft software, but Worm uses your computer networks connections, like your network connections, your TCP connections, your UDP connections to spread. So that's a Worm. Then you have zombie also known as bots. So what are they? They are compromised machines. So once your PC becomes compromised, then your PC is used to do more attacks uh, uh, from on, on behalf of the hacker, your computer is used to do more attacks. So zombie is basically a computer that has been infected with malicious software. So for example, my computer could be infected with a malicious software and that malicious software will be spreading, uh, creating more connections and spreading viruses because malicious software is a worm that contains a payload and payload could contain viruses, worms, Trojan horses and other types of uh, infections that could be spread because worm is the concept of uh, a worm is to spread. So worm could be used to create a zombie and the, the machine could become infected with a malicious software and it could be activated to launch further attacks like a denial of service attack is done by zombie. We call them as bots. Okay, bots and reflectors are generally used for that purpose. The Victorian Institute of Technology has other great videos covering many different topics. Please check them out and thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe the video for more great content like this.